Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Hello. Hello, Hello Mr. Okay, thank you for your response, my students. I am here with a new lesson that is uh, about the cell before that. Let us remind what we discussed last period. Anyone who is interested to tell us what we discussed last period? Technological products used in biology. Thank you, thank you. What are these technological products used in biological studies? Microscope. Microscope. Oh. Come on, my students, please raise your hand. Technology and... Hello. <clears throat> so, what are the technological products? Okay, the one who is. Okay, let me tell you, the technological products that are used in biological studies are, one is microscope. <clears throat> microscope is an instrument that is used to magnify and dissolve small objects or tiny particles. The binocular, or sometimes what we call telescope, that is used to observe <clears throat> distance or far objects. Far objects. And centrifuges, another product that is innovated by technology, and it is used to separate particles within a solution based on their uh, white difference. <clears throat> and so, you know, manometer, or commonly that we call the blood pressure, is a kind of material that is used to measure the blood pressure. The blood. Nanatan. Okay, stethoscope is another instrument that is used to listen the internal body sound especially the heartbeat is measured or determined by using the material known as telescope. And balance is another material used to measure the wire or balance, I mean the mass, uh, you know, the difference between mass and voids. And there are also other materials which are used to facilitate the biological studies, as well as in order to improve the health status or the way of diagnosing the disease and providing possible drugs so we can use those materials in order to improve our living style. And my student today, what I get planned is uh, on the topic that is related to the life. So our today's lesson is quite related to the cell. So before starting to discuss about the cell, let us say something about the characteristics of life. What are the major features or characteristics of life or living things that show specifically or the general characteristics that unify every organism? So please, would you mind if you tell us some characteristics of living things? Inhaling and exhaling air. Okay, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. inhaling and exhaling that is related to the gas exchange or extracellular respiration. Any other? Reproduction. Reproduction, which is actually the major or the main characteristics of living things that involve in speciation or replacing once on life. 
in order to sustain the species. Reproduction is quite common in living things. Any other? <clears throat> Any other? Any other? Nutrition. Nutrition, that is the science of food. Every organisms are characterized by obtaining of energy or nutrients are essential aspects of food which are involved in energy production or obtaining energy. Any other? Anyways, let us see where there are some features of living things. <clears throat> living things are composed of cells. That means that every organisms are made of a smallest unit known as cell and the characteristics by itself, especially life characteristics are quite complex and uh, shows a flow or order and they respond or give a reaction to a stimulus that is up here or former to their environments. While living things show increment in size or they show increasing in size that is known as growth. And as we said earlier, reproduction is a common in which speciation is tax plus obtaining energy or uh, uh, using energy through respiration or cellular respiration or cellular oxidation is one of the aspects. Maintain internal balance that is known as homeostasis. Homeostasis is ability to maintain the internal body temperature actually. Not only the body temperature, sometimes uh, they also regulate the salt concentration and that is also known as osmo regulation. Anyways, generally maintaining the internal balance is one of the aspects. Living things still show a gradual change in structural appearance that is known as evolution. So adaptation leads to a new structural formation. So if we say this much concerning the living things, living things are really characterized uh, <clears throat> and show some features that enables them to sustain their life. And the next topic or our today's uh, topic is about the cell. So cell is simply a structural and functional units of life. As we said earlier, every living organisms are made of cells. Every living things or living organisms are made of cells. M salin nantabits folk lihonichilal, wem tenish bit lihonichilal, naza ya folk wem yabits, it is a rogan, katan nishi ye, bolokitochno, and naza buzu bolokitochna, and the lihono. Folk, why bet any balloon? We gumbum and alone nagares are root malan. Now, living things, when living organisms, in yanch and romalan, kabuzu, mollyan, trillions and trillions of cells, yet as a run and malatno. So, cells are a building block of life. Building block of life, meaning. Uh, the structural and functional units, the basic units of life. Okay, so <clears throat> cells are the basic building blocks of living things. For example, the human body is composed of trillions of the cell. That is really amazing. So several many cells are involved in the formation of human body. We know that uh, cells group together and specialize to form another structure known as a tissue and tissue still specialized to form organ. Organs still organized to form the structure known as a system or organ system. Finally, a group of organ system form the organism. And cells provide a structure for the body taking nutrition from the food or that we call metabolism. Um, as we said earlier, living things are characterized by obtaining of energy or energy formation. So this shows that one of the aspects of life that is obtaining of the energy starts from the miniature known as the cell. That's why we say cells are a basic unit, fundamental units of life. 
meaning sets lets for the future characteristics of living things. For example, the skeletal or internal, external structure, functional future that is related to the physiology are started as the cell. So that's why we say, or we call cells are the basic units of life. Oh, the starting points of life. So if you say this much about the cell, but what is really the origin of cell? From what thing the cell comes? If cell is the starting point of life, but what about the cell itself? Okay, simply cells come from pre-existing cell or uh, cells come fr from pre-surviving cell. By the way, the cell was first named by Robert Hooke, the biologist or the scientist, termed as Robert Hooke in 1965. By the way, he observed a tree bark while observing a uh, so a small dark room, which quite resembles a small dark room. And he called this a small dark room as of cellula. Cellula is in Latin words on in Latin term. It means that a dark room. Cellula in Latin means uh, a small dark room. And from the term cellula, it derived a name that is cell. So it remarked that it looked strangely <clears throat> similar to cellula or small dark room. And there are some other scholars uh, who contribute about the cell theory, namely the Theodor Schwann, Matthias Schleiden, um, the Virchow, and others are some of the scholars that are involved in cell theory. Uh, <clears throat> The first man, so when I live cell under a microscope is Anton van Leeuwen. My students, this is your web seven uh, lesson background when you deal about the microscope. By the way, Anton van Leeuwen was a person who invented a microscope, a simple microscope for the first time. At the meantime, he was the first person still to study the bacteria, bacteria specifically, but generally, Cell was first studied, observed, looked by Robert Hooke. Robert Hooke. So uh, some of the scholars, what I mentioned earlier, who have a credit on the cell theory lecture, the Schwann, Matthias Schleiden, and Virchow. Rodolf Virchow are some of the scholars that we can rest on the contribution of the cell. <clears throat> So uh, cells can be simply uh, defined as the basic units of life or structural and functional units of life. Uh, most cells are microscopic. What does that mean? Most cells are microscopic and some cells can be seen under our necktie. For example, ostrich egg, a chicken egg are a kind of cells. And we can observe them under our necktie, but most of the cells are only observed under a microscope. So microscope is a basic tool for our microbiological or cytological laboratory. Cytological laboratory. <clears throat> for example, the human egg cell cannot be seen under our necktie. So we have to use the microscope, instruments called microscope. Uh, <clears throat> types of cells, types of cells. There are two types of cells, namely termed as prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. Prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells. What are prokaryotic cells? In simple terms, prokaryotic cells are cells without a nucleus or Prokaryotic cells are cells that lack a true nucleus, meaning the genetic material that is a DNA is found freely mixed with the cytoplasm. 
it means that the nucleus is not being surrounded by the nuclear membrane. So such cells can be termed as prokaryotic cells. <clears throat> so we can raise example for such cells or for prokaryotic cells, that is bacteria and <clears throat> the blue-green algae commonly that we call cyanobacteria, cyanobacteria. Pro means first, karyota or karyotic means nucleus. So uh, prokaryotic cells are actually the cells, the first cells for this planet that are observed in this planet. And they are primitive. They lack a true nucleus and membrane bounded organelles. What are the membrane bounded organelles from your grade seven biology, cell biology especially? The membrane bounded organelles are <clears throat> like mitochondria, ribosome, endoplasmic reticulum, cultivate, uh, centrosome, lysosome, and so forth are some of the organisms. But unfortunately, we cannot find those organisms here in prokaryotic cells. So the first type of cells, which are still primitive, are prokaryotic cells. Example for prokaryotic cells are bacteria. Bacteria. So most of the cells, <clears throat> especially the prokaryotic cells lack a true membrane and I mean the true nucleus and mem <clears throat> membrane bounded organelles. And the second type of cells are eukaryotic cells. Eukaryotic cells. You means uh, true, karyota mean I mean, uh, nucleus. So you through karyota or karyo means nucleus. So eukaryotic cells or eukaryotic organisms are organisms that have a true nucleus in which their nucleus is bounded by nuclear membrane. At the meantime, they have also a membrane bounded organism. So this shows that eukaryotic cells are advanced over the prokaryotic. So we can mention for those kinds of cells, uh, <clears throat> like animal cell, plant cell, fungal cell, uh, protozoal cell, and so forth are some of the examples that we can mention under the eukaryotic cells. So they have a nucleus, meaning a true nucleus. As you observe here on the model, the center is occupied by the nucleus, and a nucleus are a genetic material which are bounded still by <clears throat> the nuclear membrane. The eukaryotic cells have a membrane bounded organism. What we mentioned are they like mitochondria, ribosome, endoplasmic reticulum, lysosome, centrosome, chloroplast, and what have you. All the membrane bounded organisms are present here in eukaryotes. So we can. Uh, Take examples, those examples. <clears throat> uh, concerning their advancements, so simply, uh, eukaryotic cells are quite advanced than the prokaryotes. The other classification or aspect of the cell is cellular composition. Cellular composition. By the way, what we, what we missed on the cell theory part is to say, uh, organisms can be made of either a single or several cells. Organisms that are made of a single cell or only one cell are termed as unicellular organisms or single celled organisms. Or you can also say one cell organism. For example, bacteria and all protista generally all protista or the protozoa, for example, ameba, paramecium, euglena, uh, mastigophora, sarcomastigophora, and other groups of protista or the protozoa can be termed as unicellular organisms since they're made of only one cell, including the human beings or other animals, especially, or Organisms that are made of several cells can be termed as multicellular organisms. So that are made of many cells can be 
thermidas, multicellular organism. Example for multicellular organism, plants, animal, fungi, except yeast, my student. Do not be confused with this idea. Uh, uh, Saccharomyces cerevisiae or yeast is only single cell fungi. The only single cell fungi. Most fungi are multicellular organisms, but only the yeast is a single cell fungi. And commonly that we call scientifically Saccharomyces cerevisiae. Saccharomyces cerevisiae. So <clears throat> most of the cells, uh, especially that we can mention under multicellular organisms like plants, animal, fungi, and so forth. Uh, <clears throat> unicellular organisms, as I said earlier, made of only one cell. You know, uni means one, single. Concerning those unicellular organisms, organisms are very small and need to be seen with microscope, meaning those cells are not seen under our naked eye, so we have to use a microscope, a microscope. In some cases, for example, bacteria cannot be also seen under ordinary microscope, so we have to use advanced one, since the prokaryotes are the smallest cell. Oh. And uh, the other information concerning the cell is, for example, as you observe here in, on PowerPoint, amoeba, mm -hmm. bacteria, mm -hmm. protozoa, unicellular algae like uh, chlorella, spirogyra. Mm -hmm. And unicellular fungi, what we said earlier, yeast and paramecium from protista or protozoa are some of the examples that we can mention under the uh, <clears throat> uh, unicellular organisms. So uh, in simple terms, it's so much a lot of Oh. Oh. oh, okay. So simply concerning the previous uh, discussion that is related to the <clears throat> cell theory, not only actually the Robert Hooke, the Matthias Schleiden and Chodo Schivens are the mostly known scholar in cell theory. By the way, Nazi Sawich, and Agar Sawich Nacho, Matthias Schleiden Nacho, or Joshua Nibalus, Tarikul and Garacho Zigana, Ulatum German Awea Nacho, Ulatum Yera Sachon Tanat, Seadar Guk Oito, and the Nyosla plant Seatana, and the Nyoda Musla animal Seatana Nabera, Na Bagatami. Berlin Conference Live, yeah, yeah, Masata Dulumiaganuna, Nazisa Witch, Berlin Conference Live, yeah, Masata Dulum, and the note on Atacho Lamagra, Malatno, and we know Slap Plant in a Beretta Nona, Ulum Plant which Casilno, yet a service. Every plant are made of a smallest unit called cell, yeah, Milon. Yeah, much other shape and out on it. It's a terror. Slani Malsiatana in a barrow, the Mundazo, Ulumani Maluch, yet a serrut, Casil no, Emilon has some Akarabana. Slazianas is a witch idea almost Slami Massassel. All plants and animals are made of the smallest unit called cell, the Milo Hassa, not the Kalo, Camilo Ansar. Bezatas Mamto, Slezi, Ihe idea, better lady. All plants and animals are made of the tiny particle or the smallest unit called cell. Ye milo idea, better lando, ye Matthias Schleiden, ye Theodros Schwan idea, no bemabal, tawaka.
Okay. The other feature of the cell or characteristics of the cell is cell is cell vary in size, shape, and function. For example, the egg cell and the sperm cells are quite different in size and shape. I'm sorry. For example, the egg cell is quite oval shape. Oval shape. But the sperm cell is not. This is quite related to their function or their importance. Their importance. Concerning their locomotion or movement, the sperm cell can move, but not the egg cell. The sperm cell, so there is structural difference, size difference, functional difference, at the same time, <clears throat> at the same time, internal and external differences observed uh, on the cells. And another example, the nerve cell. The nerve cell is quite, it resembles a tree with branches. So <clears throat> this shows that cells vary in size, shape, and function. Let me ask you one question. Most cells are vary in size, especially, especially in related to the function, their importance. But why cells are really small? Most cells are small. What is the reason? To fit in. Is that much or So what is the reason behind that most cells are small in their size? So, or what is the advantage behind to have a, a small size? To fit in in the body. Okay, thank you. Any other? Any other? If they're small, uh, they yeah. small, they'll get, they'll be too much and it might help. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Sampir. Yes. Okay. If you have any answer for this question. Uh -huh. <clears throat> okay, hopefully you know that what the idea, the surface area to volume ratio from your physics background. So as the cells become tiny or very small in their size and their advancement, or their activity will increase. So mostly small sized cells are quite advanced than the larger sized cell. Okay, another question. Another question. Uh, what makes the cells quite unique or basic for the sustainability or existence of the future life? Or why we say, or what is the evidence behind to say cells are the units of life? Sampir. Um, well, there are different types of cells, so they all have a different kind of advantage in our, in our body or in anything. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so the the difference between them gives us a different advantage as they behave. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> mm -hmm. That's my answer. For example, uh, uh, can you tell us some of the cells 
that are found in your body? Nerve cells. Mm -hmm. Muscle cells. Mm -hmm. Would you mind if you tell us with their function? Yanit. Nerve cells are cells that involve in transmission of nerve cells and which are low mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Any else? Okay, simply <clears throat> uh, the evidence to say cells are the units of life because cells serve as a starting point, for example, every structural arrangement, every structural physiological feature starts as a basic unit cell. For example, cell can perform every life activities. It shows a gross a size increment and uh, <clears throat> reproduction and other features are started as of the cell, as of the cell. Do you have any question on the feature or characteristics of cell? Cell light, yeah, get No. No. Okay, that clear for you. Yes. Okay, if that is, we'll see you next time. Thank you for your attention. Bye. Bye, mister. <laughs>